Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the beginning of my fourth week of teaching on Joseph from Genesis chapter 37 through the end of the book of Genesis. And I think that tomorrow is going to be the last day that I'll teach on this series that I've entitled Lessons from Joseph. And I tell you, this has been powerful in my life. God has used this teaching to literally just transform my life, to keep me from giving up, to give me hope. And I tell you, there are so many people today who need hope. They need encouragement. And I'm talking specifically to people who have a dream, a God-given dream and vision and purpose for their life, and yet they're frustrated. They aren't seeing the fulfillment of it. They know that there is more for them than what they are experiencing. And in between, when God drops that dream in your heart and starts it, and when you see the fulfillment of it, there are some tough times in there. And I tell you, you have to keep yourself encouraged. And Joseph is one of the characters in the Bible that the Lord has used to encourage me hundreds and hundreds of times. I just know in my heart that as I've been teaching on this for the last three weeks, that this has touched a lot of people's lives. And so I want to encourage you, tomorrow is going to be my last day to make this teaching on Joseph available. I encourage you to please get these materials. I know some people think, well, I've watched it every day. Why do I need to get the materials? There's a difference in getting this broken into little 30-minute segments and then getting the entirety of it, especially so that you can go back and listen to it over and over. If God speaks something to you, you can stop and write it down or look up the scripture and then go back. It, it just would make a greater impact in your life. You know, it's not about us selling product. You can go to our website and get all of this free. You can download it free. I don't care how you get it. I'm not after your money. I'm after putting the Word of God in your heart and so please call or write or visit our website and get these materials. I promise you, this teaching on Joseph is a life-changing teaching. So we've already covered a tremendous amount of material, and I was starting to share on last Friday's broadcast that many people interpret Joseph's action after his brothers come to him and request food, and he uh, put their money back in their sack's mouth, he said that they were spies. He accused them of things. And many people interpret that as Joseph just being full of hatred for his brother and revenge, and he's wanting to punish them and make them suffer like they had made him suffer. I believe that is absolutely inconsistent with everything that the Bible reveals about Joseph. Joseph was a faithful man. Matter of fact, I'll get into these verses today, but he said, don't blame yourself. God sent me before you so that he could preserve life. Joseph was not doing this out of bitterness or anger. And some, some people would say, well, then what was the point of making it look like his brothers were spies and making them bring Benjamin and then accusing them of stealing his cup when they found it in Benjamin's sack? What's the point of all of this? Again, Joseph's brethren were very ungodly men who had murdered hundreds, I mean murdered, not in battle, but just out and out, brutal murder, had killed hundreds of men, had committed incest with their own stepmother, with their own daughter-in-law, and they were just a vile group of people. And yet these were the patriarchs. These were the ones that God was going to use to be His people. And the Lord not only sent Joseph to Egypt to preserve their life and preserve them during a famine, but at the same time, I believe it was to bring these ungodly men to the end of themselves. And I believe that Joseph knew that this was it. When he had these dreams and they bowed down to him, it was more than just the physical bending over. It was spiritual. It was emotional. They finally yielded. The ungodliness, the evil yielded and bowed its knee to the good and to the righteous. And so I interpret the things that Joseph did as trying to bring these guys to the end of themselves and to realize you cannot live the way that they were living and prosper. They had to be held accountable. They needed to face the sin and the things that they had done. And I believe that that was the whole purpose behind Joseph doing these things. So we've already talked about how that he accused them of spies. He kept one of them, Simeon, sent the others back and said, you can't return unless you have Benjamin with you. Finally, they came back with Benjamin, and he brought him to his own house, gave him a feast, 
sat them according to the order of their birthright, which I'm sure it says that they marveled at this. I'm sure they were shocked. How does this man know who is the firstborn, the second, on down to the, to the twelfth born son? And they were pondering these things. He sent them away, but then he put his cup in the sack of Benjamin and then sent his soldiers after them and accused them of stealing things and brought them back. And finally, it looked like that they were all going to be just slaves, that Joseph, in a sense, you know, they sold Joseph into slavery. It looked like Joseph was going to take them as slaves and make these 11 brothers uh, their slaves. And they were not going to allow Benjamin to go back. He would have let the others go, but he was going to keep Benjamin. And they said, no, we can't do this. And so let me just share with you this, where Judah finally came to Joseph. Of course, at this time, he still didn't realize this was his brother. And he just began to confess to him what was going on. And I'm not going to read all of this, but let me just say that he gave a brief history of the family, talked about they had this one brother that was not, which was talking about Joseph. And of course, that was a, a polite way of referring to him as being passed away. The truth was he was sold into slavery. He didn't come clean with that. But when it came to leaving Benjamin, here are a few of the things that um, Judah said. And let me just read this in verse uh, 30. This is right after uh, Judah is reporting that Jacob had said that if Benjamin doesn't come back, that I just can't live. His whole life was wound up in the child. And so here's the plea that Judah is making with Joseph. In Genesis chapter 44, verse 30, it says, Now therefore, when I come to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass that when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. For thy servant, talking about Judah, talking about himself, became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman, to my Lord, and let the lad go with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me, lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father? There's some really significant things right here. Uh, and there's much more than probably what I'm going to say right here. I encourage you again to get these materials. But Judah here is showing a compassion towards his father and saying that if I go back and I don't have Benjamin with me, I'm going to bring down my father's gray hairs to the grave. It'll kill him and I'll be responsible. How could I live with this? So here's, here's one of the first things. When 22 years before, when they sold Joseph into slavery, they didn't care about their father. Now, some of you may find that hard to believe, but if you go back to Genesis chapter 37 and read this, they took Joseph's coat, they stripped it off of him, they killed a lamb and put the blood on this jacket, and then they came back. And they didn't just out and out say that Joseph is dead, but they set it up. That's what it looked like. They were you know, pre presenting this evidence, and they told their father, says, uh, you know, judge, whose coat is this? And he immediately jumped to the conclusion, and he says, it's Joseph's coat. He's been torn in pieces by a wild beast. Surely he's dead, and he began to mourn. And if you go back to Genesis 37, it talked about that the sons r rose up to comfort him and to, to help him get over his grief, and he refused their comfort. And he says, I will go down to my grave mourning for my son. Did you know if they had any compassion towards their father Jacob at that time, all they would have had to have done is to say, well, he's not dead. We lied to you. We misrepresented it. Uh, we sold him into slavery. He's still alive. And that would have totally changed this whole situation. Possibly Jacob could have gone and have bought him back or something. But they were more concerned with themselves. They didn't want to be shown for the, for the ungodly, evil man that they were. And they kept up this ruse for 22 years, watching their father suffer every single day for 22 years. 
I don't know how many of you have experienced the loss of a child or you've been close to somebody who has. I, I have not suffered the loss. I, well, I did. I suffered the loss of a child for five hours. But praise God, God raised him from the dead. I've never been through the things that some people suffer, but you're never the same. I believe that God will help you to get over it and that you can prosper, but you're just never the same. I mean, that's a part of your life that's gone. And for 22 years, Jacob suffered every day. And these men, these ungodly men, watched their father suffer and they cared more about themselves than they did about their father. Again, that speaks volumes, volumes right there about what these guys were like. And I believe that this is the very reason that God set things up the way that he did and led Joseph to do what he did because he was trying to bring these guys to the end of themselves to where they'd care more about somebody else than themselves. And so when Judah is confessing these things right here, he talks about how that his father would just die if Benjamin didn't come with him. His life is bound up in the life of the lad, and he can't do that. He can't bring himself to do this. And so, number one, this really shows that finally Judah had gotten to where he cared more about his father than he did about himself. And he was not willing to put his father through any more suffering. So that shows some repentance. That shows a change right there. So that was important. They needed to come to a place of change, repentance, to where they were willing to live differently. And here's Judah humbling himself and saying, I just can't do this to my father. You know, he should have come to this 22 years before and have humbled himself and not let his father think that his son Joseph was dead this whole time. And then he goes on to say that... Um, he, he would become surety and he would be the one that would stay. And he offered himself to be a slave to Joseph if he would just let Benjamin go back home. Now, you know, Jesus said, No greater love hath any man than this that he lay down his life for his friend. Here is Judah coming to a place to where Judah says, Take me, make me a slave. He didn't have his wife. He didn't have his children with him. He was willing to stay there without his family to lose everything. He literally laid his life down so that Benjamin could live. And again, that's the greatest expression of love that there is. You know what? God had done a work in these guys. If you go back to the very first time they appeared before Joseph, they were talking among themselves and it says they didn't realize that Joseph could understand what they were saying. But they said... All of this evil has come upon us because we saw our brother plead for his life and we didn't do this. And therefore, this is just retribution. It's justice. And so from that first time, which could have been a year before or whatever, they had been living under this that, uh-oh, our sins are finding us out. You know what? They were confronted with the fact that they didn't really get by with anything. God was going to set the scales right. Things were going to work out. And so they had started humbling themselves. And right here is Judah humbling himself, putting his father ahead of himself, and finally willing to offer himself as a slave for the rest of his life if they would just let Benjamin go. I tell you, that's major. And I, it's only reported that Judah is the one that said this, but it appears that every single one of these brothers had basically come to the end of themselves where they were just saying, you know what? We deserve all of this. We brought it on ourselves. We're now going to take the punishment. We're going to deal with the consequences. And they were just going to set things straight. And I believe that that's what all of this was about. This is what God wanted. Let me just say to you, before I go on with the rest of this story, that you know what? There are some people watching this program that you've got things in your past that you think you've gotten by with. But... You, you don't get by with anything. You know, everything you do, everything you say, you're either sowing seeds of good or seeds of bad. Now, I do believe in forgiveness. And I do believe that God forgives us and totally wipes our sins away. And I believe that when we repent and when we turn to the Lord and when we appropriate what He has provided for us by faith, that we can have a crop failure that you can stop those negative things that have happened in your life 
from coming up and haunting you and having to live with the consequences the rest of your life. Praise God for Jesus and our freedom and deliverance from the curse of the law. But it does have to be appropriated. We do have to turn from those things. A person who, you know, let's just take a person who's, say for instance, was a drug addict or an alcoholic or something like that, and all of the consequences of that going on in your life, and then you come to the Lord and you receive forgiveness. I believe that you can appropriate total cleansing so that you no longer see yourself as a druggie or a dope addict, uh, an alcoholic any longer. You, you see yourself totally brand new, who you are in Christ. I believe that you can do that, but it's not going to just happen automatically. Just because you receive forgiveness doesn't mean that you're automatically going to receive and experience the freedom and the liberty that is available to you in Christ. You have to appropriate it. And one of the ways you appropriate it is you can't sit there and dis dismiss it and say, well, there's nothing wrong with it, and I'm just going to continue to live as an alcoholic or as a drug addict. Did you know if you were truly born again, God will love you. And if you were to die, you'll go to heaven. But if you just continue to live that lifestyle, if you never turn from it, if you continue to sow those bad seeds, you're going to continue to reap negative results. You're going to have your body fail. You'll hurt your health. You'll have your job fail. You'll have marriages fail. You'll have relationships fail. People will lose respect for you. Your witness is compromised and on and on you go. And even though you're forgiven and you're righteous in the sight of God, there are consequences to the way that you live. And so these guys needed to change. They needed to repent. They not only needed to stop doing these things, but they needed to humble themselves. And this is what God used Joseph to do, was to just bring them to the end of themselves. And Judah is the spokesman for the whole group. And he showed that he had finally gotten to where he was not willing to cause his father any more grief and suffering. And he was actually willing to lay down his life and become a slave so that his brother, all of his brothers, could go free. You know what? They don't use the wording right here, but that's repentance. That's true conversion. Judah was a changed man. Judah had become a different person. Prior to this time, let his father suffer for 22 years, lie to him about the death of Joseph, and it didn't matter. He was going to put himself ahead. He wanted free from the aggravation that Joseph was to him, and he didn't care if his father spent 22 years grieving. He had changed. Prior to this time, he just promoted himself, even had incest with his own daughter-in-law, and then came that close to burning his daughter-in-law with fire and putting her to death because she had gotten pregnant when she wasn't married, and it turned out he was the one that had gotten her pregnant. And he, he just was a vile, wicked man, but here he is laying down his life for somebody else. This is repentance. This is conversion. And they had to come to that place. And brothers and sisters, you have to come to that place. If you've never made Jesus your Lord, you can receive complete forgiveness. I mean, these are some bad dudes. These are some evil people. And yet, they found repentance. And they found forgiveness. And God went on and used these guys. It doesn't matter what you've done. God can totally forgive you. And if you've already received forgiveness from the Lord, and you are forgiven, and if you were to die, you were to go to heaven, but if you are still sowing these seeds, and if you are living your life in opposition to God, and not cooperating with Him, and not following the Word, you need to recognize that you need to stop that. You need to come to an end of yourself and doing things your way. And you need to start doing things God's way. Man, these are some of the lessons that I learned from this. Again, many people just think that Joseph was punishing his brothers and trying to make them suffer. No, he was trying to bring these brothers up to a different level of living than what they had ever done, to where they cared more about somebody else than they did themselves, where they'd start operating in honesty and integrity instead of lies and deception and all of the things that they were doing. And I believe Joseph was an instrument of God. This was God's will to change them. The Lord didn't only want to deliver them from starvation, 
That was part of it, but he also wanted to change these evil men so that they could become godly men and that this could pass on through their children and that these people could be God's people. The Lord loves you and He wants to forgive you, yes. But even if you've been born again, He wants you to quit living in a way that just empowers Satan to come in and to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to set you free. You need to come to a place of repentance. You need to turn from doing things your way. You and Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. I guarantee you, all throughout hell, I believe that he has suffered ever since then thinking about, I did it my way. That is not the way to live. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the way of death. You need to turn from your own wisdom. You need to submit yourselves to God. You need to come to the end of yourself. And that's what God used Joseph to do with these brothers, was to draw them to the end of themselves. And it is typified right here in this 44th chapter of Genesis where Judah humbled himself repented, put his father first, and even laid his life on the line and said, make me a slave. I'll be a slave for the rest of my life if you'll just let my brothers go. Man, that's awesome. Would to God that every one of us would humble ourselves and quit blaming everybody else and just griping about everything and recognize that, you know what, most of the problems that we have, we bring on ourselves. Satan is going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He can't just devour everybody. I'm not saying that you necessarily cause every problem in your life. But if we submit ourselves to God as Joseph did, God will eventually take even the negative things, the things that Satan does, and work it together for good, and you'll come out smelling like a rose. If we are living in defeat and things aren't working, that's never God's plan for us. It's because somewhere along the line, either you sowed for those things and you're reaping what you've sown, or if other people just attacked you, instead of staying faithful and keeping in faith and looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, as Joseph did, you got into discouragement, bitterness, depression, and you allowed Satan to steal from you things that God has for you. But either way, whether it was directly seeds that you've sown or just attacks and you haven't stood against the attack, God can turn these things around, but it begins with you. It begins with you humbling yourself and submitting yourself unto God. Do you know on our screen right now, we have our helpline number here in the United States, also in the UK. And I know that there's people all over the world that are being touched by the Lord right now, and you just need to respond. And it needs to be something that you do. So calling that number could be a step of faith for you just to reach out to someone and tell them, you know what, I've got adjustments in my life that I need to make, and I'm confessing it to you. I'm saying this before God. I'm changing. By the grace of God, things are going to be different. And if you will do that, I guarantee you this could be the beginning of a brand new chapter in your life. As you call, also request these materials. Remember, tomorrow will be my last day to offer this teaching on lessons from Joseph. I know it would be a blessing to you. So please call or write today and receive the materials and then join me again tomorrow as I continue the gospel truth.